Hi, I'm Dr. Bertice Berry, and I would be remiss. I would just not be Dr. Bertice Berry if I didn't tell you this story. Come on in, little boys and girls. Sit down. You're going to learn something today. I went to a presentation with Dr. Todd Gross, who is the president and CEO of the Georgia Historical Society, and it blew my mind blew my mind for many reasons. One, he was talking to a group of high-powered leaders on the connection between enslavement in, in Georgia specifically and um, the killing of Ahmaud Arbery and the, you know, unequal distribution of wealth in society and all these other things that are, are an outcome of enslavement. And he made the point so well that it was, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of obvious. But what he did even better than that was to show people why it hadn't been obvious to them. Now, most of what he presented, the historical facts and the information I knew, I knew, you know, I mean, I, I love history. So I knew these facts and figures about slavery and how it happened and what happened and la la la. Um, he also showed images from textbooks from the 50s that showed enslaved people getting off boats, shaking the hands of the enslaver, and they were dressed in English finery, and the text saying that they were grateful to come from Africa because it actually saved them from death by spear, and now in America they could sing in the fields as they did their work, which they enjoyed. You hear people saying this today and you wonder, what? Questions like, were there any good slave owners? No, <laughs> what he did for me, um, what he, he brought home this notion of really why people didn't know. And I knew from Ty Sigley's book, Robert E. Lee and Me, it was a real good awakening of how people have been bamboozled, let astray, run amok. But Todd closed the presentation with something that made you grab your head. Now, I'm going to tell you this. If, if I read in the comments how you already had nude that, because a lot of y'all like to tell me what you had already had nude. <laughs> Spelled just like that. I already had nude that. We're going to have some issues. Todd said between from the late 40s, I don't know, from the 50s into the 70s, everybody had the same their, their history teacher had the same first name. Coach. I'm going to let you sit with it like I did. I can hear you cussing from the other side of the screen. And he said these textbooks that had been created by somebody with an agenda were handed to Coach who also had to, you can't just coach football, you gotta teach something. It's gonna be social studies or history, <clears throat> which was basically the same thing from the same book. He read the book and taught that lesson. I have often wondered why people think histor history is subjective. <laughs> like, <laughs> No, there's like some facts and, and there's some historians who actually know what they are and, and you can find them and you can read them and you can learn from them. Not so much. I, I'm going I'm to let y'all sit with that all day long. I'm going to let you walk around and talk to people and talk to yourself and go, dang, if you didn't learn it right in school and you didn't learn it beyond there. Why are you trying to keep your children from learning it now? I love you. And we're going to get there. And while there's some good coaches, I don't want them teaching me history unless they have that degree in history. I love you.